How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. I want to show you quickly how to seal a gap, crack, or hole in the exterior of your home. Now this is something I call out on our maintenance checklist as a yearly item and that is doing a perimeter walk around your home or your rental properties and looking for any holes that you need to seal up. There's two different products that I recommend and there are some best practices that are going to help you with this project. In addition, at the end, I'll show you how to get more use out of that partially used product. As homeowners, we usually only have a small amount of material we need, so then we have to waste a lot of that material if you don't know how to properly store and then later use that product. So let me show you a few examples, and here is a classic one right at your AC lines coming out of your home. Now you don't want to add new material on loose old material. So you want to cut out your old material with a Milwaukee Fastback or even better, a snap off knife, which gives you a much larger cutting surface. And also that blade can kind of contort to the vinyl siding. So you'll trim off the loose and old caulk or silicone or whatever was used, getting down to a solid base. Then once you're to the solid base, now let's talk about the first recommendation for filling these holes and getting everything sealed up. So the first product I recommend for smaller gaps and holes, usually under a quarter inch, is just a 100% pure silicone. What I like about this is it's perfect for outdoor, it's extremely durable, and it's also used for indoor. So I can use it across multiple different projects. Now, this GE brand is a bit expensive, around about $15 per tube. If you want to go about half price, I do like the Dynaflex 230 from DAP. Now this is not a 100% silicone, but it is paintable and you can get it in a number of different colors. So if you want something a little cheaper that should also hold up well, but not quite as good, you can go with the Dynaflex 230. I usually start off by filling in any voids or gaps. So I'll just fill those in with the silicone and then I'll put a new layer all the way around trying to adhere the silicone both to the lines but also to the vinyl siding. I want to bond on both sides so the vinyl siding will move around a bit and I want to make sure that this is going to be able to flex but also maintain a seal and not just break open a new gap in less than a year. I'm using a shim to smooth that out. It is not a beauty contest but it is nice to kind of have a little bit more of a fit and finish look or just to spread that out to make sure it's adhering all the way around the lines and also that thermostat wire. Now you can just move on to smaller holes. Classic one would be like coax cable coming into your home or something like this where it's a wire that actually reads a meter. And then kind of to the edge of what I would use this for. I'm using my carpenter pencil because it's just a good reference. A carpenter's pencil is a quarter inch by a half of an inch. And you can see I'm right at that quarter of an inch, which is large of a gap that I use silicone to seal on an exterior part of my home. So I'll just work it again around this gas line coming in, which is another classic area where bugs can get in or you have a gap. And just smooth it out to get a nice finished product. So before we touch on the larger gaps and the different product I use for those, I just wanna to touch on a common issue for us homeowners. So you saw me seal up a few different holes, but you can see that plunger right there. I have barely used probably 15% of the total tube of this $15 silicone. Now this is great material, it's wonderful to work with, it's gonna last forever, but it's really hard to justify spending that much money if you're only gonna be using 15 or 20% of it. And then the silicone hardens in the tip, and what do you do? Well, some people put nails, screws, zip ties within the tip to try to be able to pull those out and pull out the hardened silicone so you can get to the still usable volume within your tube. But there is a much better way. So what I found on Amazon was basically this airtight tube. So it just unscrews. You put your 10 or nine ounce tube within that. It actually has a seal on the bottom, which will seal even the bottom of the tube, which some argue can also let air in and contaminate the tube of silicone. So placing the top on, and you can see there that that rod is gonna go into the tip. And then you start to screw this down and it's gonna create that seal, that airtight seal. So not only are you sealing the bottom, you're sealing the top, but you now also have a rod in the tip 
which will pull out any of that hardened material when you want to use it again. So now that I'm able to store this at home or I store it in my truck so it's ready for any of my projects. If I have a small project at a rental property, no problem. I have a tube of silicone where I don't have to go buy another one. So it's super handy for me. And you can look below this video, you'll see a link to our Amazon store where you can click on that, jump over there and find this recommendation along with all of our other recommendation to homeowners and DIYers for tools and supplies that they can use around the house. So what do we do with those larger gaps? And you can see it's much larger than the half inch size of the carpenter pencil. Well, make sure you have gloves on and let's use some spray foam. And this is the expandable foam by Grade Stuff. What you'll do is shake the can for at least 60 seconds and then screw on the top here with the application straw. Flip it over and spray that into the gap. Now at the top here, I sprayed a little bit too much. You actually only wanna fill the void about halfway up and then let the spray foam do its work and that will expand out. Here's a time lapse over the 45 minutes for the spray foam to set up and what our end product looks like. So you probably think I just use that same snap off knife and the long blade and just trim off that top part. Well, I usually don't do that when it comes to the expandable foam and let me show you why. So two examples here, I have the foam we use, which is just the great stuff gap and crack filler and then the equivalent Loctite version. I sprayed samples in both of these cups and let them set for a couple hours. Now you can see both of these are going to be pretty water resistant and although the great stuff is smooth they're both complete when it comes to the actual shell or perimeter of the expandable foam. Problem is, is if we actually cut into that foam right we took a piece off to make it flush you can start to see that there are voids within that and that could start to then open up the crack or gap you just filled. And if you think the great stuff has a lot of voids, check this out. That Loctite had a massive void open up. So if this was an example on that foundation, I cut it off to make it flush with the brick, I could have a massive void, which I would then have to fill again. So that is why I usually do not cut off the expandable foam. And that's why you wanna fill it halfway or a little bit more. So after it's done expanding, it's flush with the surface and you can keep that outer layer. Then when it comes to reusing spray foam, one, just know there is an expiration date that is on the bottom of the can. That's usually 18 to 24 months out. But just know you can't leave it in your cabinet for years and years and then just pull it out and it's gonna be good to use. After I get done using it, I allow the spray foam to dry in the tip and then I will use a screw and I'll place the screw inside the tip. I will thread that screw in a little bit and then I'll work that around because what I'm trying to do is pull out that dried foam. So now we have an opening that would allow new spray foam to come out. So now our can is good. But when it comes to the applicator or the straw, that is where I will turn to my small bottle of WD-40 and use this straw here. I will take apart the applicator, usually pull the straw off from the actual trigger itself. I will spray in WD-40, which will eat away at that foam until I see WD-40 actually going through the parts, going through the straw completely and then doing the same thing on the trigger and the part that threads onto the can. Once those are cleared out, they're usually pretty good to go. And then just know when I use this again, I do run some spray foam through the straw and just put that in a paper towel before applying it to a foundation or a hole, just to make sure there's no residue of WD-40 or anything that would then deteriorate the spray foam that I just applied to my house. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Those are the two different products that I keep in my truck and I use on those gaps to make sure the exterior of my house is all sealed up from bugs or just the weather. Now, if you wanna see what else I tried with spray foam, check out this video right here. It was a pretty interesting video where I was trying to lift a sunken sidewalk and support that with just spray foam. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.